Hi. Oh, don't want that showing. <laughs> Sorry guys, I went shopping. Um, I know this is taking forever, but and I probably won't get it all done before I fly back to Britain. So um, you're gonna have to wait for the rest of it till next week. Um, yeah, let me carry on. So um, I was sent home. I had that really hot curry, which was tasty, but but a bit of any hot. Um, and then in the night, uh, so this was Monday night, and Luca was born early Wednesday morning. Um, they started up again, <laughs> the contractions, and if I say they were intense the night before, this night... <laughs> they've gone to a whole new level. And they were, they felt like they were back to back, it was just... It was, it was hard. It was really, really hard. But I had this, I think I kind of like worked out or decided in my mind that my contractions were most efficient, or I had, at least I had this feeling that they were more severe or more intense and then hopefully most productive when I was on my own doing my own thing. So I for as long as I could, the, that Monday night and into Tuesday, I did not wake anyone up. And I don't know how long it was. It was it was a good few hours though, I think, that I was on my own with these contractions. I um, made my own kind of like rope out of my dressing gown belt and I uh, secured it to our bed and I was holding on to that for when I could lie down. Um, uh, having these contractions, I was, I don't know how I did this because they were really painful. Uh, I didn't make any noise. <laughs> I know what I was doing. I was nuts. I didn't want to wake anyone up because I had this thing if I wake someone up, they'll go away. So I was determined to be quiet and just get on with it. And uh, I got to this, I don't know how long it was, I, I couldn't handle them quietly on my own anymore. So I went and had a bath again in the middle of the night. And um, I think I was whimpering in the bath, or my, the water, sound of the water running, or something woke my mum up and she came in and was just like, um, bear in mind, my mum had four kids, all of them without any pain, she's like, yeah, uh, painkiller. And she's like, what on earth are you doing? And I was just, I wasn't crying yet, but I was just like, I thought they'd be best if I was on my own, or they'd work better, and she's like, okay, that, that, you know, she's trying to help me through it. So my mum took this night shift this night. And um, she was like, yeah, you do, you're doing this really well. And I was like, I want to stay here as long as I possibly can. I said, don't make me go anywhere until, like, you you think he's coming almost now or something. Because I, I said, I don't want to be sent home again. No, it was, like, almost tearful at the time. I said, I just don't want them to send me home again. Um... So um, my mum taught me this this technique that she'd used. She was count she counted through her contractions, and um, as a, quite a few of you you know, I'm a linguist, and uh, I so I was first counting through the contractions in English, and then I tried in German because the more I had to think about the mental act of counting through them uh, in another language, it, the better it was. I more had to focus on something mental. Uh, but German was too easy as well. So then I went on to French, which I'm also, well, I've got a master's in it, so I suppose my French can't be that bad. Uh, and that wasn't enough then. And then I went into Italian. I really, I did Italian years and years and years ago and not to a very high level. Um, but I suppose at a push, yeah, I can count to over 100, which I think I was trying to. And that worked brilliantly because I had to really think like, oh, what is 22 in Italian? And what is 32? And, that was fab, <laughs> uh, but they were really, really close. Um, sorry, just checking if my husband's coming back. It's weird to talk about this in front of him. And they were very, very intense. And my mum was like, I think you should wake your husband up now. Um, you need to go to the hospital. And I'm like, um, no, no, I'm not going yet. And she kept saying, she said, Robert, I really think you need to go. You, should, you might have him here. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I didn't really bother. I was at this point. I really didn't care. And actually, questioning if, if going into the clinic was a good idea after all. I'm like, oh, I'll just have me. You know, I was a bit mental. Um, but the white light was, you know, there, good. The counting was good. 
and um, I could tell they were getting more intense and more they must be getting more effective with what I was thinking because when you count through the contraction you know how long the contractions lasting and they were lasting longer and they were getting closer and closer together so I thought right yeah and finally I did get my husband up and I said look we, I think we have to go and my mum was like you gotta go now you gotta go now she was all like panic it was quite funny actually so had contractions on the way to the car in the car from the way to the car to the clinic again in the clinic doors and was hooked up to the machine and they made me lie down to you know check how the contractions were going and that was just unbearable i was like ready to climb the wall that i can't handle i could handle having them but i couldn't handle lying down strapped to something it, it, that was just torture <laughs> it was absolutely torture um and um then they checked me and they said you're a little over four centimeters and i just thought and i, I really get upset thinking about no i was just like i can't keep going if it keeps going on like this a night to move what one centimeter so i'm gonna be here next week is what how I felt and, and she said look um uh there's I don't know what exactly it was called but she said there's something we can do to widen the, the how far you dilate it or something or she said it won't it will barely have any effect but it might help a bit and she said it might move things up but she, but she said I warn you it's gonna hurt and I'm like do it I don't care do it <laughs> and so she did it and yeah, it did, did really hurt and yeah, it really, really did hurt, but I, I handled it. Um, and uh, then they, they said, yeah, you can't, and, and they, they did uh, promise me, they said, we will not send you home anymore. She said, you're too far, you know, into the process, and they're very close together. But they, um, they stopped again a bit, really. I mean, they didn't completely stop ever now after this point, but um, it got to the point where they were definitely slowing down. And so we got into the clinic seven o'clock in the morning and then four o'clock that afternoon, I went that long trying to handle it myself and not asking for anything. And I hadn't even like taken a paracetamol to this point. And um, I, I pressed the buzzer. I reached my point where I just thought they need to do something. I can't take any more of this. Um, and I didn't want painkiller, I wanted them to do something, I wanted them to get my baby out. I didn't want a cesarean section, but I was like, um, I've got to have Pitocin then maybe, because otherwise I may end up having a cesarean section, which I wanted to avoid. I mean, of course, if you have to, you have to. But um, my midwife then, the one who I did my kind of pre-birthing class with, came in, and the second I saw her, I just, I crumbled, and I said, <laughs> it's quite emotional, sorry. And I asked how she was, and she was like, what is wrong with you? How are you, um, you mental person? And I'm like, I said, I don't think I can do it like this anymore. And she said, yeah, um, she said, um, we've been talking about this for quite a while now. And she said, but if you told us not to offer you anything, she said, I really think it's time for some painkiller and you need to sleep. She said, because if you don't sleep, you're not gonna be able to do this. And I was like, yeah, okay. I was just totally mad. I was like, well, what do you suggest then? She said, well, you can either have a really strong painkiller that Luca will also you know, make him feel a bit drugged up, but I can't remember what it was called. Or you can have an epidural. And I said, I want whatever affects Luca the least. I really wasn't thinking. I was just thinking of something, any move forward. And this is totally against what my original birth plan was. But, um, Things had been taking a long time. I mean, I'm, I'd been in labour for several nights by this point, and um, was at the end of my tether. And uh, I said, "Look, can you? I can't believe I asked." I said, "But you're going to have to give me pitocin." I said, "Because I need help to get these contractions going, and I don't have the energy to go up and down the stairs anymore. Um, I want to, you know, I want to keep my energy to push them out, and I'm, I'm worried that I'm not going to have it." Um, yeah, this is going to go on to another part four. I probably won't get it done, but bye guys. <laughs>